Hello, this is Brendan Schumacher with a, uh, another episode on illustration. And uh, in this one here, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm playing with a software called uh, Lightroom. It's uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Now, if you purchase the Creative Crowd, uh, Creative Cloud, excuse me, of uh, Photoshop, this comes with it. It seems I didn't pay extra for it, but I got the um, just the I forget what they call it, the, the the Photoshop package or photographer's package. It's you know the cheapest one. Cause I I don't even really need all this stuff. Uh, for those of you who watch my videos, I mostly use GIMP, of course, uh, but um, I did want to have Photoshop in there. Sometimes I just have to, you know, show to people that I, I do know the difference between the two. And sometimes for work, I need to uh, work with Photoshop files, so I just figured I'd get it. Now, this software came with it for free, and I did want to enhance my photos, but I didn't know how to use the software, so I looked up a tutorial or two. And I have to give credit to... Anthony Morgantini, whose name, if I didn't pronounce correctly, I'll put up on the screen. And uh, he yep. has over 200,000 subscribers for his YouTube channel <clears throat> for uh, basically doing tutorials on this software. And they're very good, and it's where I learned everything. So, um, yeah, credit to him. And all I'm doing is using the techniques that uh, he goes through in his uh, one of his first videos and um, well the first one that I found anyway and then um, it, it was perfect it just showed me everything I need to know about the the basics of uh, how this works so this is an example here of an illustration <clears throat> which um, let me see if I can zoom in the original the before is on the left here that is my the actual illustration I did and uh, on the left you can see how it's a lot more vibrant and I just, uh, you know, using this software, it helped me to get the tones and the values and the blacks and whites a lot more sharper, which I think a lot of people appreciate more. I might have even overdone it, but uh, I just want to show you how I did that, and we'll get the, the before and after results. And I'll put it up on the screen, um, you know, somewhere during this video as well, so you can see the uh, the, the full images. Um so I'll show you how I did that. One of the things that I had, and of course, just you know, I'll try to make a link to uh, Anthony Morgantini's video that I watched too. Um, but some of the uh, what he does is for photography, this for illustrations. So I thought it might be useful for people who follow my kind of stuff. And uh, let me go in here and show you for starters how did I get the image in here, which is actually kind of a, a little bit of a pain. So go to the library first when you open the software. And um, when you first uh, open the software for the first time, I think you're just going to see a black screen here. And uh, it's kind of annoying. You just don't know what to do. So the first thing you have to do when you're in the library area is go to import some photos. So down here in this area where, uh, yeah, if you can see that there, you have the import button. I believe this is correct. And now um, the first thing you see here is you have local disk C, which I do not want. So I'm, um, and this confused me the first time because I actually have uh, my files on a different disk. It's on disk A, and so I didn't know what to do. But if you go up here, and then go down to click other source, which uh, let me bring up my magnifier real quick. Uh, excuse me, just a moment. Yeah, there it is. It's a little slow to come up, but uh, yeah, here's the, the magnifier. I'll bring this over here. So if you go over here and click on local disk C, slide down to the bottom one just before this breaker right here, you see there's other source. And that's the one you want to click to be able to uh, uh, navigate inside, you know, the Windows browser. Um, and definitely, I guess you'll be using Windows. Uh, I believe it's Windows software. They might have it for Macintosh too, but this, uh, you you would know what to do if you're a Macintosh. You would just get a different environment to choose your files. So here I am in, uh, in Files A, and I, what you want to do is you're not going to select actual photos to import. That's one of the, uh, it's a good thing after you realize what's going on here, because what you want to do is you're usually dealing with batches of photos, like a photographer who went, went out for a shoot 
and I took a whole bunch of photos. So you put all of them into one folder and that is where you know all of the photos you're going to deal with are going to end up at. So I made a folder here just called Lightroom in my illustration folder. I select that folder, that's all I need to do, and I already put the photo that I want to deal with, well it's actually an illustration that I want to work with inside there, and I'll just go select that folder. Now there's one illustration that, that I wanted, and it's already selected, it's checked as you can see. So now we can go over here uh, on the bottom right, and again this is another thing that's really annoying with this software, like first the button's on the left and it's on the right, where do you got to go? But uh, this is how you understand it. So on the bottom right here, with that selected, then uh, yeah, and there might be a whole bunch of illustrations or photos you wanted to import, and you just check the ones you want, and then you go ahead and click import. And so here I have the image I want to work with, but we're still in the library. So if I had selected many images I want to work with, there would be you know many thumbnails here, but uh, here's the one I want. That's the only one I need right now. So I'm just gonna make sure that's highlighted by clicking on it. And then I'll click up here on the uh, top right area over here. We have uh, develop. And let me see if I can do the um, magnifier again real quick, which comes up a little bit slower than I wished. But there it is, yeah. So here's a magnifier. And uh, you see the magnifier up here. You have library, develop, map, book. You can even make a slideshow, go to print or web. Some of these things I don't even know, but the only things that I really need right now. Well, slideshow was fun, you know, after I, I uh, played with a bunch of photos, made a slideshow. Um, but library is and develop are the two key areas to get you started, and then later we're going to export. So first I have my library, that's where I am now. Now I'm going to go and click develop, and there is the image that I want to work with. Now down on, and I will need that magnifier again for this, <clears throat> Just waiting for the magnifier to come up. Oh, there it is. Down in this area, we move this down here. In this area down here, you can see this button here and the YY button here. So if I hit the control key to help help me to zoom in on those. If I hit the that square button there, it, it moves it so I'm only working with this one image. And if you go over to the YY and click that, it'll show you the before and after. Now right now before and after are the same obviously because I haven't done anything yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at one single image that way I get a bigger view. And you just click it once to zoom in and you can hold the mouse down and pan around. Click it again to zoom out. Now I chose this image because obviously it's very, um, I did this a long time ago and it's very uh, bland, uh, it has low saturation, maybe even a little muddy. That happens sometimes when I'm staring at an image for too long. <laughs> I, uh, it, it just happens. And I've learned to uh, get better at it. But uh, yeah, this is one of my earlier illustrations. So it was uh, it was just like that little foggy, low in saturation. But here's the, uh, the tricks that Anthony Morgantini shows. And uh, I, I just applied them to this and I, I thought it was great. I'm going to start off with uh, exposure here. Um, over on the right side here in the basic area, I'm going to close this other stuff. You, you have all these different things here. And when you start the software, I'm not sure exactly you know, what it's going to look like. But the basic area is I found all that I really need to, to get me started. And, well, I mean, it's probably all I need. I already made the illustration myself, and I have color controls in GIMP or Photoshop to begin with. But now I'm just trying to do some enhancement. Uh, so from top to bottom, we'll look at exposure. Obviously, exposure and contrast are put right together right here, and they're basically the same as the um, as the, excuse me, I must have to sneeze. They're almost the same as just brightness and contrast in the uh, in the other softwares that you use. I'll bring the magnifier over here. So you have exposure and contrast here, and it really is the same thing in my opinion. If you play with exposure you know go higher it gets lighter down it gets darker I think exposure is just a photographer's word for brightness contrast again it's the same thing that you'd find in any other software and it's not the point of uh, you know uh, of this little tutorial to even talk about that and then we have 
highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. This is where it gets really interesting. So I'm going to show you those. And then down here, clarity and vibrance, I'll go over in a minute too. Let me uh, get this thing out of the way. So the thing is with the highlights, let's watch what happens when I bring it all the way down, if anything happens at all. Not much. All the way up, and here's all the way down. But what, ha what I notice is when you bring it down, I'm starting to see more detail. And I believe, if I'm not mistaking, this is exactly what Anthony said in his uh, tutorial, is bring the highlights all the way down and the shadows all the way up, which sounds kind of weird, but it gives, it just brings out that detail. And then after having done that, you play with the whites and the blacks. Now to play with the whites and the blacks, the, let, let's start with the whites since it's the next one in line. I hold down the Alt key, which is next to the Control key, and then click on that little controller there. And I slowly bring it up until I just start to see a little bit of color like that. See, if, if I bring it all the way down, it'll be completely black. But if I slowly slide it up, then you just start to see some color come through. Now I let go. And now with the blacks, let's do the same thing, but opposite. I'll hold down the Alt key, push on the, the button, the lever there, and I'll sl slowly slide down in the opposite direction until I start to see, in this case, a little bit more black. And there you go. Um, and that, well, that obviously saturated it way too much. Um, so let me try that again. I'm going to start in the middle. I'll hold the Alt key down and just to see a little bit of black. Okay, good. Now, with those tricks right there, just following that one, two, three, four, you know, four steps, highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, bring the whites up with the Alt key until it shows color, and then bring the blacks down with the Alt key until it shows color. Just with that there, let's look at the before and after and see what happened. I, I mean, I think we can see right there, that's a mag magnificent difference. However, I think it's a little, actually a little too saturated, but we have plenty of more buttons here to play with, even within this basic panel. And so I'm going to go back to that, and uh, one thing we can do is simply take the saturation and turn it down a little bit. So I have uh, an actual saturation on the bottom here, If uh, and I wish this uh, magnifier came up a lot faster than it did. But uh, here it is, yep. <laughs> I might have to find a way to dock that. Down here on the bottom we have uh, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. And so saturation means how strong the color is going to be saturated. Saturation is the amount of color versus the amount of black and whiteness that it has. So if I bring it all the way down to no saturation, then it's black and white. And uh, the more I slide it up slowly, slowly get more and more saturation right and then if we go up here vibrance is almost the same but what vibrance does is it takes colors that were not so saturated and it, it brings them more to life so it's not saturating all of the colors it's just picking out certain colors that might have been a little dull so it's bringing more vibrancy to it clarity brings sharpness between the lights and the darks. So wherever there is a white next to a black, it's going to uh, sharpen that up a little bit. And I like that a lot. So let me close this uh, magnifier. What I'm going to do is, uh, again, this is pretty much the same as what Anthony Morgantini suggested. I like to bring the clarity up a little bit and the vibrance just a little bit. Um, now having said that, let me go back to my comparison here. Uh, I do like this new one better, and I'll zoom in maybe to some important parts. So it's too big. I wish I could zoom out to a particular area. Maybe this guy here. And you know, as you zoom around, you can just see you have a lot more uh, vibrancy in the color, but it's still too vibrant. So what I learned after watching his video is that uh, you know you don't have to follow religiously exactly what he said with the blacks and whites. What I do is I just play with all of these and I might bring the whites down a little bit more than I had them and the blacks down a little bit more than I had them. Uh, highlights, uh, again, I mean these are my controllers on my software. I'll, I'm just going to slide it all over the place and see where I like it. Maybe I like it a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying bringing the shadow down a little bit. I don't want to bring that down like 25%. And that's that. 
and you still have exposure and contrast if you want to you can play with that all day long and you know the more time you spend with it I bet the better it'll get so uh, but th the same as I was mentioning before whenever you start to look at something too much for too long it just uh, y your eyes start to go crazy I guess at the end of the day just play with it for a little take a break you know have a lunch break or even wait a day and come back and see if you really like it um, but one thing is for sure playing with this software uh, is a lot better than that duller version and I know for a fact a lot of people gave me comments when I uh, posted this online they said it's really nice but I wish the colors were a bit more vibrant and this definitely helped me with that if I was in uh, GIMP or even Photoshop I probably could have achieved the same effects but not so quickly and so easily as I could with this software so I definitely recommend this as like a finishing step and I could even take this back after I export it put it back into GIMP or Photoshop and work it up a little bit more now that my colors have been adjusted okay so that's that and then what you want to do is uh, you know you want to publish it you want to finish it so go back to the regular version here and again we have to look for the button oh yeah back to the library now while I'm in library there should be an export button as you can see right down here is the export button and it's going to ask you a bunch of questions that uh, you know none of us wants to have to deal with uh, most importantly is to choose the folder where you want it to be exported and uh, just read these you know you can have subfolder catalog um, it asks you whether or not you want to uh, resize the image at some point and that could be important if you're exporting like I don't know 20 or 30 images and you don't want them all to be full size because you might just be uploading them uh, for the web Facebook or something um, and so and it saves your settings after the first time you do it so I made a folder called Lightroom export and uh, I'm just gonna have it go there and now we'll go click export it might tell me I already have this one in there no but on the top area here you can see that it's working and since it's only one image it's done it just has that little uh, progress bar that flashed there very quickly and it's done so now I can go back into that folder which was an illustration Lightroom export here's a bunch of other photos I was playing with and here is the is this the correct one yes that's the finished product right there which is uh, a lot better than the, I, I think that's okay like that it's not too bad again if we compare it to the uh, go into the develop mode here and you can see the original was much more dull much more bland maybe some people like that I, I actually did like it when it was like that I just felt like it was foggy uh, distant but I think some people are gonna like this and if I don't like it of course I can just play with the saturation bring it down a little bring it up a little do something like that that's all for this video I just wanted to show how uh, sometimes using a different software can also uh, help with some of your older illustrations or maybe even the new ones that you're working on help to enhance the colors and stuff like that it's a very nice software I found it easy to use after watching uh, some of Anthony Morgantini's uh, videos so you might want to go ahead and subscribe to him and watch some of his videos if you're interested in that Thank you very much and have a good day.